Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. In this video, we're going to look at properties of circles. Now, as we start talking about circles, there will be a few vocab words that we're going to run through. First, let's define what a circle is. So, a circle is a collection of points somewhere out on a plane that are all equidistant or the same distance away from a center point. So, that's how we get our nice round circular shape. Now, there's going to be a few special segments that we talk about as we're dealing with these circles. And the first one is going to be a radius. What a radius is, is it's a segment, so it's got two endpoints. One of the endpoints is going to be the center of the circle, and the other endpoint is going to be somewhere out on the edge of our circle. So the radius runs from the middle of our circle out to the edge. Our next special kind of segment is a chord, and a chord again has two endpoints, but what's going on with this chord is both of the endpoints are going to be somewhere out on the edge of our circle. Our next vocab word is a diameter, and a diameter is a special kind of chord. So since it's a chord, both endpoints are out on the outer edge of our circle, but what makes a diameter so special is that it runs through the middle of our circle or the center of our circle. Now that kind of wraps up these special segments, but there are a couple special lines that we can talk about. One of the special lines is a tangent line. So a tangent line is a line that's out on our plane, and what's so special about it is a tangent line intersects a circle at just one point, and we call that point the point of tangency. That's the point where our tangent line intersects our circle. Our other special kind of line is a secant, and a secant is a line that's going to intersect our circle at two points. Okay, so it's sort of like a tangent where it's crossing our circle, but a secant crosses at two points instead of just one point. So as we're looking at this picture, we're given a bunch of different points and lines and segments within our picture, and we want to identify some of our special vocab words that we just talked about. So the first thing that we're going to look at finding is the center of the circle. And the center is just the point that's in the middle of the circle. So for us, that would be point C. Point C is in the middle of the circle, so it's the center. Now as far as chords go, remember a chord has both endpoints on the outer edge of the circle. There are actually two chords within this picture. AE is a chord, the segment that runs from A to E. But there's also a chord that runs from A to B. Since that AB chord runs through that center point C, we would actually classify the segment AB as being a diameter of the circle. Now if we're looking at a radius, remember a radius goes from the center out to the edge of the circle, so there's going to be two radii that we can look at. When we're writing a radius, we want to start with a center point, so one radius would be running from C to B. Our other radius, again, is going to start at point C since that's in the middle, but it's going to go out to point A. There is a tangent in this picture. Remember, a tangent intersects a circle at one point. So the line we're looking at as far as our tangent runs from D to B, with B being that intersection point or that point of tangency. So our tangent line is the line DB. And our secant line, now earlier we talked about the segment AE as being a chord, but if we let AE be a line that extends through those endpoints, then we're going to consider that line AE to be a secant. The last thing I want to talk about in this video are common tangents. So earlier we talked about what a tangent line is, and that's a line that just barely touches a circle at one point. A common tangent is a line that's tangent to two circles. And there's going to be a few different cases that we talk about with common tangents. The first case is where we have two completely separate circles. And if we're looking at drawing in common tangents, there's going to be four common tangents that we can draw in with this case. There are two exterior tangents, which are on the outside of our circles. And then we have what are called interior common tangents, which run on the middle between our two circles. Our next case, if we start to slide that smaller circle in a little bit, is where these circles are just barely touching at one point. If our circles are just barely touching at one point, then we're able to draw in three common tangents. Again, we'll have our two exterior tangents on the outside. And then since our circles are touching at just one point in the middle, we can draw a line perfectly between them that just hits each circle at that one intersection point. Now if we slide that little circle in a little bit further, so now they're touching at two points, then we're only able to draw in our two exterior common tangents. 
Now if we slide that little circle in a little bit further, so now again our circles are just barely touching at one point, but now the smaller circle is inside of the bigger circle, we're only able to draw in one common tangent there, and that's at the point where our two circles are touching each other. And then for our last case, we can take that little circle and move it completely inside of the big circle so that they're not touching at all. In that case, then we're not able to draw in any common tangents because we can't draw in a line that intersects our big circle at one point and our small circle at only one point. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.